Now let's discuss female feticide. What is female feticide? When a mother is carrying a baby in her womb, it's called fetus. When they detect that the fetus is a girl child, they abort the child or they drop the child because it's a girl. So when it is known that it is a girl child and in the fetus itself, the child is killed, it's called female feticide. It shows the kind of gender discrimination that is followed in society. Female feticide is an attempt to stop the natural growth of a female fetus in the womb of a mother or aborting the fetus forcibly. It is very difficult to have an exact statistics like we don't have an exact number of how many babies are being killed like this in the fetus itself. But we have come across some proofs that show that this happens. What are they? Let's look at it. The female ratio of children between 0 to 6 years has gone down between 1961 and 1980. As per the census of 2001, the female child ratio for every 1000 boys was 933. In 2012, it was 940. There are only 940 girls for every 1000 boys. The ratio of girls is so less. So this is one of the proofs that female feticide is happening. But between the age of 0 to 6 years, the number was 914 for every 1000 boys. So 0 to 6 is even more less. Around 1,600 girls are disappearing every day. It's a very serious problem, students. This means around 6 lakh girls are missing every year. Isn't this such a burning issue? According to some surveys, 100 million girl children are lost in India till today. It is so painful for me to even say it. So students, what is female feticide? What are the proofs that such a practice is happening? This is the answer you're supposed to learn and write. As per the census of 1991, there were 960 women for every thousand men. But in 2001, it appears to have increased to 965. But in the age group of 0 to 6 years, the number has decreased very alarmingly. In 1991, there were 960 girls for 1000 boys. But in 2001, from 960, it's 949 children, girl children for every 1000 boys. From a regional perspective, in which region is this happening? Let's look at it. 80% of newborn children have died in urban areas. Can you believe it students in urban areas and around 69% in rural areas. There's also a survey, the National Health Survey that says in the last 10 years mortality rate, mortality rate means death rate of male child was 53.6% whereas the mortality rate of female child was 34.6%. So students, what is the meaning of the statistics? When a newborn baby is born, sometimes the baby dies at the time of birth or may survive for one or two days and still die. So that is mortality rate. If we observe this mortality rate, male child mortality rate is 53.6%. So male child is death cases are more than the female child. So how does this say that female feticide is happening? It shows that male child is dying, right? Now we will look at how this is so different from reality. But the mortality rate of male child after birth, so after the baby is born and the child, the baby dying after some time is 16.5% but for girls it is more being 19.3%. So these statistics are not matching. If the statistics was true, the male child should have died more and the female child less. But because this is not matching, what do we understand? Because it's a female, purposely they will be killing the child. 
this shows the amount of intolerance in society towards the girl children the life expectancy of female is always more than male but children mortality rate is more among girl children when we look at life expectancy what is the meaning of life expectancy the number of years when a child is born they assume that this child may live for so and so years like let's say 60 years 70 years 80 years for a female child the number of years is always more life expectancy is always high so given in this case the chances of a female child surviving should be more than a male child but no it is reverse it is ulta so what does this show there is female feticide there is killing of female child one of the main reasons is said to be the failure of nutritional programs at the ground level in order to stop female feticide it's important that our society gives equal rights to male and female it's also important to implement this act which act preconception and prenatal diagnostic techniques act so this bans the checking of the fetus so this act ensures that no test is done to determine whether the fetus is male or female in spite of all these measures female feticide has not been curbed or stopped to whatever desired extent it still happens it is more evident in the middle class upper middle class and among the educated people in india as well female feticide is taking place more among the economically rich or affluent people why because of property inheritance laws if there is a property it will be given to the male child not the female child because the female the girl child will marry and belong to another family so the property is given mainly to the male that's why even amongst the rich and the upper middle class this practice of female feticide can be seen issues like dowry exploitation from the husband's family sexual harassment within the family and in public spheres make this a very complex issue the prevalence of patriarchal values we already discussed what's patriarchy in the previous class is also the main reason for female feticide and for preference of a male child students now let's come to discussing the next problem of hunger and malnutrition so there are some basic nutrients required for a human body to be considered healthy when these nutrients are not given to the human body a lot of diseases and illnesses are developed such a case is case of malnutrition hunger is when you don't even get food adequate food in a day now how rampant in this problem how widespread it is we shall be studying and learning about it here the fao food and agricultural organization fao is a part of come on tell me you all have studied this it's a part of united nations organization we learned about fao in the uno chapter it has calculated the food need of a human being on a day to day basis in terms of calories they say if you have this amount of calories then you're not said to be hungry let us look at the definition it has said medical sociology studies have also indicated the calorie needs based on individual work nature and minimum requirements so depending on whether it's a child a male a female and depending on what kind of work you do they have told that this is the minimum amount of calories you should be eating in a day so what is hunger very important definition from examination point of view hunger is a state where the necessary calorie of food is not available for the individual an individual needs requisite requisite means a fixed a bare minimum amount or quantity of proteins carbohydrates fats vitamins and salts if these requirements are not fulfilled it's called invisible hunger like you may be getting food but you may not be getting proteins you may not be getting vitamins you may not be getting the required amount of salts even though you are eating then it is still said to be invisible hunger 
the poor people lose both calories and nutrition due to hunger so according to FAO in India an individual needs at least 1820 calories of food any person who receives less than 1632 calories of food is considered as a person suffering from hunger and malnutrition so what is the definition of a person suffering from hunger and malnutrition an individual who is receiving less than 1632 calories of food is considered as a person suffering from hunger and malnutrition what is hunger index we have learned about human development index we learned about many other things what is this hunger index index means you should always think students it is a scale like a scale of measurement to see how hungry someone would be like how how does a scale work we shall learn now hunger has different existence it's felt in the absence of required quantity of food let's say if by eating four chapatis i would be healthy but if i received only two chapatis then it's said to be i'm said to be hungry but let's look at a more scientific definition another way is that absence of required nutrition like for example i told you students you may be having carbohydrates you may be having fats but you're not having any vitamins and proteins it is still said to be a case of hunger so absence of required nutrition leads to a lot of health complications that result in physical handicappedness the premature death also reflects the absence of required nutrition when one dies before reaching a life expectancy age one is said to have died prematurely because of hunger and malnutrition so hence a hunger index is created to measure what is hunger and malnutrition the following is the index of hunger it has three aspects what are they let's look at it one the average of people who receive less than minimum calorie of food required they count how many people are receiving food less than the minimum calories second the average of children who are below five years of age and are underweight and lastly the mortality mortality or death rate of children below five years of age so what are the three aspects of hunger index you all should learn all the three students from examination point of view it's extremely important based on this index who who is making the world bank has identified india has a number of children who suffer from hunger and malnutrition india has a lot of children who are underweight it also has a relationship with infant mortality rate what is the meaning of infant mortality rate what is an infant so one minute even i don't know what's an infant i think one. so the hunger and malnutrition index also has a relationship with the infant mortality rate infants are babies less than one year of age so number of babies dying below one year is infant mortality rate if there is problem of hunger and malnutrition the infant mortality rate will be high child mobility rate child mobility rate means children moving or migrating from one region to another because they are not getting adequate resources fertility rate and economic development rates according to the global hunger index india's rank is 100 so india's rank is 100 this shows the problem of hunger in india now students let us discuss about malnutrition as per the national family health survey for of 2011 women in karnataka rural areas have a body mass index of 24.3 we have discussed students in the previous chapters what is body mass index whereas the urban women have a bmi of 16.2 60.9% of the children between 6 to 56 months are suffering from anemia 45.2% of pregnant women are suffering from anemia around 80.4% of married women participate rarely in family 
decisions and 79.5% of women are abused by their husbands. So these statistics show not just the problem of malnutrition or the amount nutrition is lacking, it also shows particularly for females their health is much much in a poorer condition compared to males. It also shows us that there is violence, domestic violence and abuse of women. 33% of women and 28% of men have lower BMI than the minimum that is needed. 79% of children between 15 to 35 months and 56% of women aged between 15 to 49 years and 24% of men of similar age and 58% of pregnant women suffer from food shortage. They don't even have enough food to eat and malnutrition. So this shows how serious this problem is. According to the latest National Family Health Survey 2015-16, 70.4% of children between 6 to 35 months of age are suffering from anemia. Children who suffer from the sort of anemia are from the families that are mainly below the poverty line. Students, how many of you remember what is anemia? I'll just remind you again. Anemia is a disease in the blood where the red blood cells are not healthy. They are mainly responsible for carrying oxygen to all parts of your body. And imagine students, if those cells that carry oxygen itself are not healthy, then so much of illness and diseases can occur. In order to provide health security, these families are receiving provisions from public food distribution system. So they have been given ration, basic groceries so that they can overcome hunger and malnutrition. In a nutshell, so when we put a summary, malnutrition is a serious problem. Every government and every organization working in the field of development should and should and must compulsorily aim and we all must participate in solving this problem. Now students, we will learn the next problem, the problem of gender discrimination. We have learned about this problems in several different chapters of your social science textbook. Here we will primarily be studying on how widespread is this problem, why is it happening, how in different areas it is happening. Gender is a concept that is used to describe men and women, male, female. This denotes not only biological features of man and woman, it includes the cultural, behavioral and social layers. So it's not like, okay, biologically one is male, one is female. That is fine. We cannot uh, say that, oh, that should not happen. But after one is born, after one has come to the world, the behavior, oh, you're a female, let's treat you differently. Oh, you're a man, you should do all these things. Oh, you're a girl, you should not be doing these things or you should be doing these things. So this form of discrimination by one's attitude, behavior and culture, that is gender discrimination. And we also put one status above and one status below. Generally, it's the male who's given a higher status than woman. So this is also the problem of gender discrimination. It is common to understand gender from women's perspective only. In development index, gender is used to study issues related to women. So primarily, when we see the discrimination happening against women, that is gender discrimination. Because women and children are the ones who are usually left behind in terms of development. So now, it is very important for us to understand development from the perspective of gender. Okay, India has developed economically, great. But let us look at how much have women developed? Are they getting more opportunities? Are they getting more of higher education? Are they being given more decision-making capabilities? Are they more empowered? Let us look at it. So what are the various types of gender discrimination. It's present all over the world. It is there across social issues. Amartya Sen, the same Amartya Sen whom we met when we were studying Human Development Index, HDI. He identifies the following categories in which there is inequality between men and women. 
inequality in birth rate. We already saw children, so much female feticide is happening. So when we compare the birth rate of men and women, we see that for women it is less, for men it is more. In patriarchal societies, preference is given for male child over the female child. Gender based feticide is a common practice in most of these countries. It's even evident in eastern countries like South Korea, China, Singapore and Taiwan. Inequality in infrastructure. Many times demographic facts would be unfavorable to women but discrimination gets expressed in different ways. In countries belonging to Asia, Africa, South America, girls have less access to school than boys and the girls are not allowed to participate in developmental programs. So what do we mean by infrastructure? There will be schools, there will be colleges, there will be other facilities, there may be industries, there may be factories but a female will not be given opportunity to go and participate or get education from there. It will be more accessible to male. So that means inequality in infrastructure. Inequality in opportunity. They don't even have equal access to work opportunities once they have received education. Though inequalities are not apparent in basic education, it would be more apparent when it comes to higher education. The opportunities for women are less in higher education when compared to men. This is more true in countries even like the developed countries of Europe and North America. Inequality in ownership. It is so rare that uh, we see that the property is going to be given to the female child. It is mostly given to the male child. So they are not equal in ownership. So inequality in ownership is more evident between men and women in societies. It's evident in the ownership of land, house and so many other assets. As a result, women cannot participate in some of the economic activities as well as social activities because of such discrimination and inheritance is always in the favor of the male child. In Kerala's Nair families, the inheritance rights in, resides with women. So this is one rare family in Kerala, they are the Nair families, where the inheritance is given to the women. As per the decisions of the court and laws, women can claim equal rights in property now. So a very progressive step taken by the law by the courts in India, now women have equal property rights with the male siblings. Inequality in family. So in a family, we may not evidently see on the surface that there is gender discrimination happening. But when we look at the roles that the male and female are performing in the family, one can come to know of gender discrimination. If you look here, the father is enjoying watching a match and playing a video game with the son. But the lady, she is doing all the household works. And the daughter is also playing with a kitchen set and not playing a game. So gender discrimination is evident in family structure too. Again, it is expressed in different ways in different societies. It is not apparent in some families, but it is found by sharing of family work burden and the role in the nourishment of children like the entire responsibility for bringing up the child is left on the mother and the fathers go out to work. So this discrimination shows gender inequality.